This device is called a battery contactor and is also known as a master relay or master solenoid or master contactor. It is nearly identical in appearance to a starter contactor, also known as a starter relay or starter solenoid. It is very important not to confuse a battery contactor with a starter contactor as they should not be interchanged because they provide different functions in your aircraft. Because the battery contactor and starter contactor look so identical, it's very important that we select and order the correct component based on the function we're trying to accomplish in our aircraft. Let's discuss the differences between these two similar but very different components. The battery contactor is used to isolate the aircraft battery from the aircraft's electrical system. From a functional standpoint, it's really just a big heavy-duty electrically operated switch. One characteristic is that it is rated as continuous duty as a contactor, meaning it can be left on indefinitely as the aircraft is in flight. Its internal coil draws about one amp when it is turned on and it will become a bit warm during normal operation. The reason to use a battery contactor is to provide a simple way to completely disconnect the battery electrically from your aircraft with the flip of a switch, whether for emergency reasons or when the aircraft is not in use. Some battery contactors have two large and one small terminal. Some have two large and two small terminals. Both styles function the same and can be interchanged with a minor wiring change. The starter contactor, on the other hand, is used to energize the starter motor on some engines used in automobiles and aircraft. This is an intermittent duty relay, meaning it is designed to be turned on only for short periods of time while starting the engine. It provides a way of switching on and off the huge amount of current that a starter motor draws. Its internal coil draws about 4 amps. So why does the starter contactor coil draw 4 amps and is only rated for intermittent duty while the battery contactor only draws 1 amp and can be run continuously? The higher powered coil for the starter contactor is needed for the faster switching action needed to help prevent the internal contacts from burning out due to arcing because of the on-off switching under high load. This situation doesn't exist for the battery contactor. Be sure to note what the amperage ratings are for the contacts on your battery contactor. Our focus today is going to be on the battery contactor. Here is the electrical diagram of our battery contactor and these posts here correspond with the posts of the physical depiction. Note that it's important that the battery be connected to this post here, which is the same over here, and that is marked on the case of the contactor that the battery must connect to that connection. Otherwise, it's not going to work the way we want it to. Notice that this device is in an electrical plunger with a coil, so when this coil is energized, this plunger moves upward and these two posts are electrically connected with this plunger bar here. Normally, unenergized, there is no connection between 
the left and the right posts. Note that the coil is attached internally to this large connection. The small post, which is the small post over here, only has to be grounded to the negative side of the battery and the coil will be energized. What's nice about this feature is you simply run a wire from this small post into your aircraft to a switch and then ground the other side of the switch. So you're not bringing any 12 volts into the aircraft to energize this coil because the coil is attached internally to the battery when you wire this up. Makes it very simple. So the purpose of this battery contactor is simply to provide a switch which connects this large post to this large post. So from here we go to the rest of the aircraft to energize your electrical bus system when the coil is energized. And this is the coil that takes about one amp of current while it is energized and can be left on continuously. This is an example of a battery contactor with just one small post on it. If you purchase a battery contactor with two small posts, and that's perfectly fine. Note that the only difference is that this wire, which is internal on this model, is not supplied. The second post is connected to the other side of the coil. So what you want to picture is that this wire does not exist on the two post coil. Rather, the other side of this coil, this wire would run up to a second post and that's the only difference between the two. And that is why on two post models you will often see a wire running between the large terminal and the second terminal. It's because this wire is not internal to the unit. You're basically wiring it yourself externally on the solenoid. It simply gives you an option to isolate the coil from the large connection in case you don't want to wire it that way. In summary, if you decide you would like to use a battery contactor for the purpose of being able to easily disconnect your battery from the aircraft's electrical system, then be sure to order the proper component. Make sure it is rated for continuous duty and that the amperage rating of the contacts are suitable for your system. Next time, we will look at the reason we want to wire in a diode to the circuitry of our contactor. Where to purchase a battery contactor? My recommendation is to look at